Hello, DGENs. Welcome to Degenerate Takes NFL Week 3 Overreactions. I, of course, am the bro, Fick 20 aj Joining me, as always, is the man with the numbers, the sportsbook whisperer, college basketball guru, daddy of the diamond, all hail the king of the links, the money train, Mr. No Engelbrecht, to know how the hell are you doing today, bub? Fantastic, fantastic. Ready to wrap up another week and get get all excited all over again for the next week hell <laughs> yeah football and college football oh hell yeah bro nice turn nice short turnaround you love to see it we got nfl and college games starting on thursday this week i mean it's going to be a wild ride and a fast one coming up noah but hey okay the morning okay I, I i gotta say this and i gotta get this off my chest because after you know going through all the morning games and everything i i just sat there like, what the hell was were all the morning games? I mean, Noah, let's talk about that train wreck, that absolute train wreck of a game in Miami. First of all, 100 degrees with humidity probably, you know, times 1,000. So not great playing conditions for the Buffalo team up there. And then Tua Tagovailoa gets knocked down and – from I think what I saw and what from everyone saw, slammed his head into the turf in Miami, went out, came back in halftime, and somehow willed the Dolphins to a victory. Um, obviously, one of the great memes coming out of there, and a meme that I think will be sticking around for a long time. Uh, defensive coordinator, it's McDermott, right? Uh, I'm losing the my head memory. Coach? No, that's oh, the, the head Bills? coach. Who's the D.C.? That, I mean, the OC lost Les, his shit. What? Oh, the offensive coordinator. Um, fuck, yeah. Um, uh, his name's such, escaping me. Such a, we'll look it up. But, yeah, he absolutely loses his shit. The Bills fall 2-1 to the now 3-0 and o Dolphins. I mean, the butt punt, Noah, I think, is going to be rivaling, rivaling uh, Mark Sanchez's butt fumble for a long time to come. I mean, just a sloppy game all around. I thought, didn't think we saw the best Bills, and I didn't think we saw the best Dolphins here either. Yeah, uh, Bills defense and special teams did everything to put them in position to win this game. Um, oddly enough, the offense not able to get it done. No. Um, yeah, Miami's defense really holding strong, winning that game for them. It, but, man, I can't believe they let Tua back in that game. No. That, that man was concussed I mean, bad. I mean, he definitely had his bell rung. All right. But I, you know, there is no way. I'm um, so week three of the NFL season, you're going to be risking your franchise guy for this win. I mean, I, I, mm. I there was no point. There'd be no point in putting to it in there if he actually was hurt. He has to pass test. They can't keep this hush hush. It's independent neurologists that have to go through and look at it before they can clear him. So I mean, well, did you did you hear what they allegedly asked him? No, I didn't. His concussion test was allegedly two questions. Okay. What day of the week is it? Yeah. Look down. He's wearing a football uniform. No shit. It's Sunday. And then who's the president? And it's like, okay, well, we've had the same president for the last two years. So that you know, and that was that was allegedly. I say alleged because it's not proven, but there's rumors out there that that was the entirety of the concussion test was asking him what day of the week it was and who the president is. And I'm not buying it, bro. Not buying it for one second. I tr- I don't think there there is no shot that the NFL that's worth billions and billions of dollars that has been you know slammed over the head about about concussions and protocols and everything would let this happen. There is no shot that if he actually was concussed, nobody would step in and say, hey, he's fucked up. We can't let him play today. I I will stand firm on that. I think the the Dolphins did everything right. And we'll f- obviously find out the NFLPA is doing an investigation into it uh, to see what truly happened. And so we'll find out, Noah. But, I mean, yeah. Well, supposedly this is not the first time that the Dolphins have – been accused at least of mishandling concussion situations and letting players play or putting them back in the game after getting concussions. So if there's any truth to this, I think we'll see some big sanctions against the dolphins. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And it would be so. rough for a first year head coach to have to go through some sanctions. We'll see what comes of it, though. Obviously, like, share, and subscribe to the Degener- Degenerate Takes and don't miss out on any of it. Noah, let's move along. I want to move to a team that I thought was going to be really good and I think I'm going to have to eat some crow about. I know it's still early, but we're overreacting today. The Raiders go into Tennessee to play the Titans. Titans beat them by two points, 24 to 22. I mean, it's just, it has not been a good start for the Raiders and Josh McDaniels this season. Um, Derek Carr is not playing the best football that you can ask him for. I mean, he did have two touchdowns, one inter- one interception, though, 26 for 44. I mean, I'm just, I, I don't know what it, I don't even know what it is at this point. Like, I can't tell you what's wrong with the Raiders because on paper, they're supposed to have one of the better teams in the AFC West. And here they are continually just bringing up duds. Yeah, I. It, it's going to be a tough uphill battle for them yeah. now after an 0 3 start, but, like, they could have won all three of the games. That they they could have, yes. Should have, uh, probably. Yeah. Um, well, they should have beat the Cardinals. Oh, they no doubt. Were in the game till the very end and had a chance against the Chargers week one, and they very well could have beat the Titans. So I, I'm going to say one should have and two could have wins there. I, I, don't, I don't think the Raiders are a bad team. They're going to, they're going to get their wins. They're going to be fine. Like they, they've had maybe the toughest schedule in the NFL through three games. Um, they get the Broncos at home. I think that that'll be their first win. Then they play at the chiefs. That's a tough one. Then they get the Texans at the saints. Not an easy game, but then Jaguars, Colts at home, Broncos again, Seahawks. So, you know, I, I bet by the time we get to like week 10 or 11, they're going to be right around 500. Oh, yeah, I, could, I hope so. I mean, I really want this team to do well, and they, they're going to have an opportunity to do well, and then we'll just have to see if they can take it or if they're going to crumble under the pressure. I mean, it could just be, uh, you know, learn it year for the Raiders, you know, brand new team, essentially a brand new team, brand new head coach, new weapons everywhere. I mean, it might take them a season to get acclimated. And hey, if that season takes that, if it takes them a season to then win a Super Bowl next year, I mean, I'd be all for it. Uh, but we'll obviously keep an eye on that. Noah, I got to talk about the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Noah, this is the same shit that happened with Mitch Trubisky a couple years ago. They are accidentally winning some football games yet again. They beat the Texan. 23 to 20. Um, I mean, Davis Mills uh, with the two interceptions really didn't set up the Texans for anything good. Justin Fields not playing a clean game either with for going eight for 17, eight for 17 with two interceptions and zero touchdowns. Noah, I'm not calling for his head yet because he has had a rough day, like a rough go at it when it comes to coaches and everything like that. But I mean, the Bears are going to accidentally win seven games this year at this point. Hey, Fields broke 100 yards this week. He did break 100 yards. I'll give him that. Shout out, Fields. Barely, but, you know, he, he did he did throw for more than 100 yards. True. God, Fields sucks. He's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Although I think, what was it, Khalil Herbert ended up with a really good game. Yeah. Yeah, 20 carries, 157 yards, two touchdowns. Big shout out to second year uh, running back Khalil Herbert. Herbert. It's looking like he's going to take David Montgomery's job by the end of the year if yeah. he hasn't already. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, honestly, it's it's a rough go. It's a rough go there, but we'll see what happens with the Bears. Texans, I mean, it's going to be an uphill battle for a long time. Um, but, hey, give Lovey Smith a year or two, and he'll turn it around. I mean, he took the Bears to the Super Bowl with fucking uh, what's-his-face. Rex Grossman? Yes, Rex Grossman. Superstar Rex Grossman. Don't you ever forget his name like I just did. Um, <laughs> God, bring that dick up, please. Um, moving on, Noah. Let's go to a team I think we may need to put on watch. And I don't know what type of a watch it is, but just on watch in general. That being the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, losing to the Indianapolis Colts 20-17. to 
Uh, Patrick Mahomes and Biennemi getting into it on the sideline, going in at halftime. The Colts' defense really stood up and got in there. Uh, Patrick Mahomes had an okay game, 20 for 35, 262. One tutty, one interception. Matt Ryan, however, having a game and a half, 27 for 37, 222, and two touchdowns. I mean... The Colts finally played like this Colts team that I thought they were going to be. It took them a while to get acclimated. They are now completely even at 1-1-1 one, one, and one through three weeks. Not a lot of teams can say that they've ever had a record like that. So shout out to the Colts for somehow being 500 in week three and only winning one game. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Uh, but, I mean, the Chiefs are the Chiefs, but there were definitely times in that game last this weekend where I was like, okay, this is where Patrick Mahomes and the boys take it over. Now, don't get me wrong. The unsportsmanlike, contact, the unsportsmanlike penalty against, um, I can't remember the lineman's name right now, uh, on the Chiefs defi- to extend that drive definitely put the Colts in position to win, but... There were still opportunities that the Chiefs had. I don't know what's going on there, Noah. They didn't come out the hottest against the Cardinals at first, and then obviously securing the victory. What are we thinking here, Noah? Are the Chiefs in danger, or are we just completely overreacting here? No, the Colts' defense really showed up this week, and I, I don't want to overreact too much, but like if the Colts lost this game, that might have been their season. Yes. Um, no, it definitely would have been. Uh, so this was a must win for the Colts. The Chiefs have been playing well so far, haven't really been tested a whole lot. And they got tested. The Colts absolutely neutralizing the Chiefs run defense or the run, not run defense, run offense. And, you know, the Chiefs didn't play a bad game, but when you're stuck being one dimensional, you're not going to win a ton of games against good no. teams in the NFL. No, not at all. Not at all. I have that. I don't know. Is that B enemy stuff anything to worry about, you think? Patrick Mahomes no. and B enemy maybe having some heat? No, no. It's it, that'll that'll blow right over. All right, um, fine. I don't think there's anything to worry about there. Although the Chiefs looking at their next games though, is important to know that they're playing at Tampa Bay, home against the Raiders, home against the Bills, at the 49ers, home against the Titans. That is a tough, tough five game stretch yeah. right there. Yeah, no, that, that's rough, and we'll see what the we'll see what the Chiefs are made of, and if they can, you know, really keep it together and put together a season here. I mean, they're not starting off bad; they're two and one, obviously, but they're just not starting off probably as strong as you would want the, the Chiefs to start off. Um, Noah, Jameis Winston, we gonna eat any W's anytime soon? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. He needs God. He needs, he needs what? Saints. The Saints are killing themselves. I mean, so many turnovers on offense. Like, their defense is doing everything to win them games, and they, the offense is just throwing it away, whether it's fumbles, interceptions. I think what well, Jameis had two of them. Yeah. Now, they didn't come until they were forced into, you know, down three scores into obvious passing situations in the fourth quarter. But, you know, didn't help with... Uh, Right to uh, to start the game right around midfield. Saints were driving the ball well. Camara fumbles, gets returned for a touchdown. Boom, 7-0. You know, two more field goals and you're down 13-0 at half. Like, the Saints just need to come out f- and, and swing first is yes. the problem. Yeah, they need to come out swinging earlier, and they just can't be put in these positions because when Jameis needs to throw the ball and he's under pressure to throw the ball, he's going to make mistakes. He's done that his entire career, and LASIK surgery can't help that at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, he plays really well when he's comfortable, but when he's put into forced situations, he will force the ball and usually throws bad interceptions when that happens. Now, with that being said, though, before the comment section goes crazy, because I am a Baker Mayfield guy and everything like that, he didn't have a good game either. All right. Neither of these quarterbacks deserve to win this game. This was a defensive game. And Christian McCaffrey, I don't really know what they're doing with him, but he has not been productive this season whatsoever. No. Yeah. Baker. I just had it up. <laughs> and if yeah, you draft him on fantasy, by the 12. way, that's what you get. Okay, you don't draft Christian McCaffrey anymore. Baker, 12 of 25, 170 yards and a touchdown. Not, I mean, under 50% completion percentage, not pretty. Baker hasn't looked good with this Panther system. As you've said many times, AJ, no quarterback looks good with Matt Rule. No one, one looks good. No one. Not that they've had superstar quarterbacks or anything, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's. I don't walk away from this game if I'm either team feeling very confident. No, no you shouldn't. 
You should not. Not even a little bit. But Noah, let's go ahead. Let's move to the afternoon games really quick. And let's let's just get it out of the way. All right? Let's get it out of the way. Right here, right now. A moment of silence for the Arizona Cardinals season being dead, for $200 million being burned, and for just, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and J.J. Watt finishing off their careers in an absolute shithole. <laughs> It started in a shithole and ended in a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you know they were thinking, oh, dude, no shit. We're going to get out of here. We're going to leave the Texans, and we're going to the Cardinals, this up-and-coming team who's paying players with a superstar quarterback. And now they're looking around the room like, hey, fuck, man. <laughs> How did we get duped twice? This is unbelievable. Un. Freaking believable, Noah. I mean, the Rams te- didn't look good whatsoever. They beat the Cardinals 20-12. to 12, But the Cardinals just looked s- that much worse. Okay, now then we're going to go to the stat line, okay? And people are going to be like, oh, well, don't bury Murray. Bear- Kyler Murray went 37 for 58 with 314 yards, but zero touchdowns, zero interceptions, didn't do anything on his legs. He was two, two carries for eight freaking yards. I mean, we're not going to win a game. Like, we are not going to win a game anymore. Like, I'm done with it. The Cardinals are dead. Okay. And, it, yeah, go ahead. Speak of this, you know, fantasy world where DeAndre Hopkins comes back and Kyler Murray suddenly figures it all out. But, no. 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 Uh, no. I'm, I'm seeing the Cardinals an early one-and-a-half-point dog at Carolina next week. As they should be. It's a road game. Kyler Murray doesn't play good at home. Kyler Murray doesn't play good on the road. Kyler Murray just doesn't play good football. And this new COD coming out, I mean, really. We're just going to see the stats in the shedder. Honestly, let's find out who these Call of Duty developers are fans of. Because I guarantee you that weekend they'll release a double XP weekend. (laughs) All right. Yeah, we'll see. Um... That was another game where I don't, I don't think either team looked particularly good. No, definitely should Just start. Like Saints Panthers. It's like whatever. Yeah, how many more weeks do we say that it's just a Super Bowl hangover and not the Rams are being bad or actually just bad? I said four or five okay. at the beginning of the season. I stick sure. by it. They they still have one to two more weeks of being mediocre. They play at the 49ers next week. Now the 49ers always have the Rams number, mm-hmm. so they're gonna somehow fucking find a way to win that one. Then they have the Cowboys at home, which, you know, got to play the God tier soup, uh, Cooper rush, but then they get the Panthers and then, and then they'll be back and it, they'll be fine. Oh, let's, well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe the Panthers get a taste for AFC West blood when they beat the Cardinals and they're like, we want another, we want the former Super Bowl <laughs> champs. And then Baker Mayfield yeah. is God. Yeah. I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> Me too. Me too. No, something I definitely had to watch to believe it was the Jaguars going into L.A. and just putting a beat down on the on the Los Angeles Chargers, thirty-eight to ten. I mean, don't get me wrong. The first time the Jags won the season, I'm like, all right, we'll see what happens. But now, I mean, picking still my favorite to win the Super Bowl in the Chargers, uh, Trevor Lawrence having himself a day with twenty-eight for thirty-nine, two sixty-two, three tutties. I mean, Justin Herbert didn't look bad either. 25 for 45, 297, one touchdown, one interception. But, yeah, that Chargers defense starting to really worry me a little bit. Now, Trevor Lawrence still, he's supposed to be, you know, that generational talent that can move around and just make shit happen. And he definitely did that this one. ETN being good. James Robinson being a big part there. But, I mean, I'm not worried if I'm a Chargers fan. I'm, I want to really push that point home. I'm not worried. You're going to lose a game. That just happens in the NFL. I'm worried if I'm a Chargers fan. No, I think the Jaguars are a lot better than we're giving them credit for. Oh, not because of this game. I'm worried if I'm a Chargers fan because the the amount of major injuries they have with starters on both sides of the ball, including season endings. Uh, I think uh, Rashawn Slater just out for the season now. Um, so you got two key injuries on your offensive line. Herbert's obviously super banged up. Keenan Allen's been in and out of, you know, practice and playing. Um, Same as J.C. Jackson. J.C. Jackson out. Um, and then there's one other player on their defense. I forget who. So, like, you got some major key injuries there. Uh, if I'm a if I'm a Chargers fan, if I'm the Chargers, number one priority right now is just getting healthy yeah. as soon as possible. No, got to get healthy. They're, they're, they're going to need it down the stretch. 
Oh, that, oh yeah, especially if they end up making a long run here. They're going to need something. They're going to need to make something happen. So let's hope they get healthy soon. And so that my pick might be right this year for once and not out before the playoffs even start. That would be nice. Um, moving along, Noah, let's talk about your Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers going to Tampa Bay. And in the goat bull, the goat bull it was being called. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, but this ended up, you know, not being the best game for either of them. I mean, Aaron Rodgers looks slightly better going 27 for 35, 255, two touchdowns, one interception. And Brady with 31 for 42, 271, one touchdown. I mean, Noah, honest to God, like we've said about a couple of these close games, if I am both teams, I am not feeling good really whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I look at it from a perspective of like Tampa Bay's, you know, had and supposed to be like the number one defense in the league. Yeah. Right. So number one defense in the league coming into this Packers were moving the ball just fine. You know, you take away the Aaron Jones fumble on the half yard line. Um, you know, this could have easily been a 21, three game true going into halftime. Packers could have pushed the ball at the end of the half and scored another three points. I was a little ticked about that. I thought, you know, this could have easily been a 24 to three game at halftime. The game's over because the Packers defense and now granted both teams had, you know, basically no receivers available. Yeah. You know, they terrible receiving options for both quarterbacks and both of them still played a halfway decent game. Um, yeah, I think, you know, take your pick. Either the Packers' defense looked a little bit better than the Bucks' defense, or the Packers' offense looked a little bit better than the Bucks' offense, or maybe a little bit of both. But, um, you know, I, th- I think, I think the Packers are going to be just fine. These these young rookie receivers just need some time to get the rhythm down to develop. I think the Packers are going to get better every single week. The Bucks, I'd be a little bit more nervous about because that. You, you know, some of those offensive line injuries and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting. Their defense is still definitely damn good. A top five defense in the NFL is what yeah. they look like. So they're still going to win a bunch of games and make the playoffs because that defense is going to win them games and keep them in games. And Tom Brady will do enough to, you know, secure the W's. So always so it seems to figure it out somehow. Noah, let's move along to Sunday night football an absolute snooze fest. I wish I would have gone to sleep earlier and just enjoyed my Monday morning, but no, I stayed up to see if Jimmy Garoppolo could somehow pull it out against the very unlikable Russell Wilson. Mr. Unlimited is more like Mr. Unlikable now, dude. It's unbelievable the hate that he's been receiving for all of his antics lately. And I mean, today it kind of worked. Kind of worked. I mean, they won. Not pretty, but they won. I think this was more Jimmy G looking bad than it was the Broncos looking good. I mean, Jimmy G, 18 for 29, 211, one touchdown, one interception. He just couldn't seem to get it done. Russell Wilson, 20 for 33, 184, nothing on the other side of the stat board. Uh, I mean, Russell sucks. The Broncos suck. This wasn't a good game in general. I think the 49ers, you know, they got that jolt of energy when Jimmy G back in, but they're showing their true colors that maybe it wasn't all Trey Lance. Yeah, I don't have many words for this game. This was uh, uh, this was just a terrible, oh, terrible fucking... A no-good, terrible, boring-ass game. 